ask you to give us a few uh, thoughts about today's game, then we'll open it up for questions, and we'll start with uh, Chip Towers and Seth Emerson. Uh, really proud of our team, proud of our seniors, proud of our leadership, proud of our staff, and proud of our support staff. Some really tough conditions to play in um, today. Uh, and it just goes to show you that, you know, not everybody across the country, I think, loves football uh, the way the kids do, especially in our conference, but they love it, and they love it at Georgia. And the leaders on this team said they wanted to play well, and they practiced really hard this week. I thought Monday and Tuesday were our two best practices of the entire year. Uh, they had a lot of juice and energy. For whatever reason, coming off the, the break, I think it actually helped them a little bit with that and uh, gave them a lot of juice and energy, and then it carried over to the game. We had some adversity in the game, had a punt block, for, uh, you know, basically a touchdown right there on the end zone and, and couldn't keep them out. And uh, we got to clean that up. But, you know, just this team continues to be resilient. Yeah, Kirby, I uh, caught your post-game interview. You're as effusive as I've seen you in a while uh, after a game, win or lose. Uh, I don't you know, know what was that the, means, Chip. That's too big a word. <laughs> very, very happy. Uh, you know, like you said, you, you talked about how proud just then you were of everybody. Was this in, in some ways kind of a statement game, you know, uh, from the standpoint of, uh, you know, people questioning whether you ought to be in the top ten and Missouri trying to move into second in the east, you know, all that kind of stuff. And and uh, and then you played like you played, especially in the second half. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's a statement game. I, I do know that our kids, you know, responded to that. And they, they, they get tired of the criticism, you know, because of the two games, the two biggest games we played in. We didn't play our best, but probably had something to do with who we were playing, you know. And uh, we, I, I think Missouri's a good football team. I really do. I think they got a good football team that's growing, young, getting better. Um, and, you know, we were able to overpower them there, I think, in the second half. And early in the first half, we did the same. But they also created some adversity for us. And I think Eli's doing an unbelievable job here of getting kids to buy in. And he's, he's tough to defend uh, offensively. Uh, the weather conditions probably limited both offenses a little bit in terms of being able to do things. But look, you can make, you, you can make an excuse and say, well, Missouri's not that good, Georgia's beat. And you can say that all you want. But at the end of the day, those kids showed up to play and play physical and play fast. And they practiced really hard all week when across the country, that's not happening uh, at every place. And I'm proud of the way those guys handled it. Kirby, uh, how much do you attribute what this offense is doing right now to JT becoming a starter? And, and how much do you think it's Munkin's system having time to come together, given everything that happened leading up to this season? I can't. I can't. There's no way I can put a barometer on that, you know. I mean, that's like if I had a crystal ball. I mean, I, I certainly think that there's, a, there's, there's two combinations. JT – is bring is throwing the ball and throwing it accurately, which is helping. And there was tough conditions today to throw it in. Everyone is playing in Coach Munkin's system for the I don't know was that ninth game, so the ninth game, and the freshmen are growing up. So I have said repeatedly, JT is doing a tremendous job. I'm not going to take anything away from JT and what he's doing, but I'm also going to recognize that George Pickens being healthy, Warren McClendon being an older tackle. Uh, Jermaine Burton growing up, Darnell Washington growing up. I mean, there's so many factors. They're hearing plays and concepts for the 50th time instead of the fifth time. So where that falls and who gets the, the credit, it really don't matter. What matters is that we're playing better, um, and we still haven't reached our potential. I mean, I, I really feel like offensively we haven't been stopped except for when we stop ourselves. Let's go to Mark Weiser and Anthony Dasher. Kirby, kind of piggybacking on that, how much confidence do you think the uh, the targets in the passing game have since JT's taken over, and then a young guy like Darnell uh, when he was targeted there in the in the third quarter? Uh, how important is it for him his growth uh, to, to you know keep coming on like he like he seemed to do today? Yeah, I mean Darnell's Darnell's been a weapon all year. It's been, it's been us trying to find ways to use him. I mean he he has a unique combination of size, and he's a hard he's you know he's a tough matchup and. Coach Munkin really likes using uh, multiple tight end sets. It's done a lot in the NFL. And if you can mismatch people and, you know, have ability to run the ball, but then also flex them out and throw the ball, it's really frustrating. You know, if you go back to that play, the, the corner went over, the safety had to play Darnell, and he's saying, wait a second now, I got a, I got a, I got a Darnell on a safety, and those guys don't cover for a living. Uh, you know, he made, he made a nice throw. But you can never have enough good tight ends in the SEC because they're big. They're athletic. They can catch the ball. There's so many things they can do. So it's, it's one of those things that we want as many as we can get, and we want to get them the ball. Hey, Coach, I just wonder if you could just kind of address the chemistry that JT and George seem to have working right now. Of course, you mentioned George now healthy. 
uh, and JT, yeah, getting better, just kind of what those two are kind of doing together right now, how special that is for you to watch. You said Jordan and JT? I missed that beginning. No, no, I'm, I'm sorry, George Pickens and, and JT. Oh, yeah, they, I mean, George is – I mean, he makes some of the – you know, every time you don't think he can catch it, he catches it. He finds a way to get the ball and catch it. And, you know, George still hasn't reached his full potential. I think people just see him and think, man, he's a phenomenal wide out. He can work on his releases and, and win – one-on-one -on -one even more often. He's, he's so good at adjusting to the ball with his body and catching it that he, he a lot of times he ends up covered just because he doesn't he doesn't necessarily release the right way, but he wins the he wins the one-on-one. -on -one. And JT's got a lot of confidence in him, but JT's got a lot of confidence in Jermaine, Trey McKitty, Kiaris. Um, we got to get the other guys to come along with that too and be able to help out. Thanks, man. Go to Jake Rowe and then Dean Leggy. Hey, Kirby, uh, that, that pick by Eric Stokes to start the game, I mean, you're coming into a game like that and, and there's so many different things kind of working against you. The early kick, the, the you know, all, all of the weather stuff, uh, maybe that was overblown. But uh, Eric making that play and kind of getting you guys off to the start, how big was that? It was big. It, it started it off right. I thought that was probably one of the keys of the game to get the juice flowing, you know, a little bit. and come out offensively and kind of punch them right there early. And then obviously we lost the momentum. But you know, one of the key plays in the game for me, and in, in, in this is the decision we all have to make as coaches, is calling a timeout now they're in the goal line. Because you know, I'm, I'm using analytics to figure out we got to get another possession. We're, we're probably conceding that score, right? I mean, we may stop them, we may not. But I'm, stop, I'm calling that timeout, not for the defense. I'm calling that timeout to make sure Eli doesn't milk it for 40 seconds. And uh, we were able to get the ball back. And we were able to have time on the clock to go down and score, which made it a two-for-one where we got the possession before the half and we got the possession to start the second half. And that was the biggest difference in the game, the 14-point swing. Hey, Kirby, you said earlier that uh, Monday and Tuesday were probably y'all's best practices of the year. That almost always comes from the players. When could you tell when, that it was going to be a good start to the week? And did you know for sure it would uh, translate to Saturday? No, I never know it's going to turn out Saturday. That's what scared me because I told the coaches, I'm worried we're going to you know, leave it on the practice field. But, man, Monday and Tuesday were just incredible. They were in great spirits. They were fired up. And I don't know that it was the, the, uh, the time off, meaning they had Saturday, Sunday basically off, or if it was the fact that Missouri was a you know, top 25 team and they got to play a, a, a good team. I, don't, I really don't know why. And it was cold. It was cold and windy Monday. We went outside. And I couldn't believe how well the guys just embraced it and, and joked around and hit it around. And then Tuesday, we did most of it outside. It wasn't quite as cold. They did really well. And then we, uh, you know, Wednesday, because they did so well, we cut it way back. And I think they responded to that. I, I was worried that it wouldn't equate because I couldn't simulate the weather. But I was just I was just so proud because I didn't know how they would react Monday. Let's go to Brandon and Sudge and then Austin Roper. Hey, uh Kirby, um, I also caught your interview on TV at the end, and you said y'all had a walkthrough in a shopping center, a strip mall or something. Can you tell me about that? Um, and then, so in terms of you saying that there are questions around your team or outside criticism, where do you feel like that is coming from? Do you feel like it's from us or people just from the outside? Uh, I mean, I don't. I wouldn't say it's outside criticism. I, I, you know, it's just like they got they got reason to question. I mean, everybody wants to question who you've beaten, how you've played, what your performance is. You know, in the two uh, biggest games, we didn't play our best game. So I'm not. I'm not. It doesn't matter who's saying it. It's, it. Everybody's got their opinion. They can say what they want. It's our job to control the narrative by how we play, um, and we we do the best job we can of that. Our kids are resilient. You know? They use, they use it as motivation. I just want to be the same and be very consistent and, and consistent in performance. Um, as far as the other deal, we, we, our date got changed. So the, the hotel in Columbia that everybody uses when they come here and play was booked already. So we had to go to a smaller hotel that didn't have the facilities to host us. Um, but they did have a strip mall adjacent that was vacant. And, um, you know, they had some air walls put up. We used it to eat. We used to walk through. But it was probably 75 yards away from the hotel. So every time we had to go use it to eat, walk through, do meetings, we had to go through the elements, which – in the end may have helped us some because you know it exposed us to the elements the entire time we were here yesterday and today and it brought me back to my Boston State days. Sometimes you gotta eat beanie weenies to go play a good game and it doesn't matter where you're at or what you gotta do, you you, you just gotta do what you gotta do and go handle your business. Hey Kirby, um so looking at today's stats, I mean you had three hundred and sixteen rushing yards, two hundred and ninety nine passing yards. It seemed like you know you were hitting on all cylinders. How would you 
kind of rank this performance offensively compared to the games of this season? I mean, would you say that this is probably the, the best performance your offense has had? It's probably the most balanced. I, I don't know what Missouri's ranked defensively. I really do not look at stats. I look at teams, and I always watch – I mean, we watch them because they're so different. They concerned me because they're so different. They play a really tough front to run the ball on, and they got some guys out too. You know, they got some guys dinged up and injured. Um, but they're hard. They're, they're hard to play against, and they rush the passer well. I, I, I want to say they might be number one in the SEC on third down defense. I may be wrong there, but – I, I want to say they're top 25 in the country on third down defense. And apparently nobody in the SEC is playing very good third down defense, including us, because we used to be one of the top teams at it. And, and the offenses are kicking butt in the SEC. And when Missouri's leading the, in, in third down defense, and we went out today and I thought we did a pretty good job on third down and convert. That's a, that's a big challenge against them. All right, our last question is uh, going to come from Blaine Gilmer. Hey, Coach, uh, just quickly, if you could touch on the growth of Dejan Edwards and then also logistically in games, uh, how about who helps you out with those analytics and, like, go for two decisions, all that? There's certain Yeah, Dejan Edwards, man, I mean, all he does is take advantage of opportunities. I thought he had some runs tonight that were just incredible. And people are like, well, it's mop-up duty. Well, they had the same players in. They had, the good, they had the starters in, and we had, you know, our second line in, and he made people miss. And he's powerful. He runs the ball hard. I, I love the kid. He never complains. Plays hard on special teams. We got to continue to find roles for him. And uh, he's a good football player. And uh, uh, comes from Caldwell County, where they know how to play football down there. And he does a really good job. So the other question, analytics. You know, we look at it each week. We get a report. Uh, I read about a 20-page uh, write-up on every game in college football that goes through uh, good decisions, poor decisions. I love it. I'm, I'm kind of a geek involved in that. So. It's one of the things we did actually right before the half. I don't know if you I – mean, I'm sorry, right before the end of the third quarter, we did a, uh, a hard count play, you know, where we were going to try to get a free play right before the clock's running now. It's getting ready to be the end of the quarter. And we, we hard count. They jump off. And then we took, we took the shot to uh, George on that play. So we're always trying to gain an advantage. And uh, I have coaches that help me with the, the two-point and the, the timeouts uh, as much as possible because you want to have double checkers. On it, so we use a defensive coach, offensive coach, and a quality control coach. Thank you, guys. We got to get on this plane to try to get home. Thanks, coach.